just want to, especially if you're new to SC Codes, I wanted to make sure that you know what all uh, resources we have available to you and why we exist. And so, uh, as I mentioned earlier on the call, SC Codes has been around for um, since 20, 2018 in its current form. And so, um, we are, um, you know, a, a nonprofit. We are part of the Build Carolina um, kind of greater nonprofit, which also houses Carolina Code School. And so, we have been kind of ingrained in the tech community in the state um, for a while now. And so, you know, the reason why we're here is there is no business or organization that doesn't need tech nowadays. Every company in some way, shape or form is a tech company. And so with that in mind, uh, there are currently almost 500 open developer jobs oops, uh, in South Carolina as of like 3 p.m. today when I checked and updated this slideshow. And so there is a huge demand for technical talent and there aren't enough people in the workforce to fill these jobs. And so, um, oops, I don't know how to use this apparently. Here we go. Um, <laughs> so here's some data from uh, 2020 CompTIA report. So employment in the tech industry in SC expanded by over 5,000 jobs last year. Uh, the tech sector alone represents 6% 6 of our state's economy. And there were over 34,000 tech job postings during 2019, bringing the current tech employment numbers in South Carolina to just over 130,000. Um, South Carolina is home to more than, oh, that's supposed to be 6,600 uh, tech-related businesses. And uh, for web developers, the um, annual mean wage in South Carolina is 72,000. So there is a high demand there is, um, it's forever growing um, and we need more developers to fill that void. So in short, <laughs> there are great jobs for people with technical skills right here, right now in South Carolina. But again, not enough to, not enough skilled um, individuals to fill those jobs. So this is where South SC Codes comes in. So SC Codes, is a collaboration uh, powered by the SC Department of Commerce's Office of Innovation and Build Carolina. And we are a platform that connects South Carolinians to the education and resources they need to unlock careers in technology. And so some of the ways that we do this is we have our online curriculum, which hopefully you all have had a chance to check out. And then we also have mentors. And this is really one of the big pieces that sets us apart from a lot of the other online learning platforms is we have real life mentors who are working in our state, in this industry as developers who want to see you succeed and who want to help you. So ex great example is Caleb. You know, he's running our, you know, front end basics courses in the evenings. He is available on Slack, all the, you know, not 24 seven, but darn near close to it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, he is one of about 70 to 80 mentors that we currently have who are invested in learners on our platform. So please take advantage as you are starting these classes or as you are learning more, please take advantage of reaching out to these mentors via our Slack channel. And um, if you've been to any of these before, you'll hear me say join our Slack channel about 10 times. And I'm going to continue to harp on that. And I will put the link in the chat box and really encourage you. It's a an easy to use. It's a very tech specific um, communication channel. So if you are prepping for the job, go ahead and get familiar with Slack because there's a very, very good chance that you'll be using that in the workplace. So get used to it now and use it to your benefit because we are all there to help you. You can throw questions in there. You can just chat with other learners, with fellow mentors, whatever you want to do that is, uh, you know, nice and not bullying. We'll, you know, we'll let you do it. So um, pre-COVID, we were doing a lot of in-person classes. Uh, that's kind of what this is supposed to look like, but as we know, COVID is, uh, has turned us all into um, virtual learners. And so we ha are kind of pivoting from classes across the state, partnering with libraries and companies um, to obviously kind of more of that virtual platform, which is what we're uh, going to be discussing more so tonight. We have lots of partner organizations across the state. Um, we are working on revamping our job board because our goal is to create that pathway from where you're just starting to learn how to code to landing that first job as a developer. 
Um, as I mentioned, on hold for now, but we typically have events statewide every week, uh, every month. And then we can help you decide on what that next step looks like. We are here to help you succeed. So this is what our platform looks like. Hopefully you've been on it. Um, and so right here, you can find all of your courses. You can create a login and um, be able to save your progress and start learning today. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, we partner with community-driven organizations, professional developers, and companies that play a role in supporting what we are doing and that they wanna help out, whether that be through volunteering as mentors, whether that be for helping us you know, build uh, or helping us come up with the ideas of what curriculum needs to be built because of the job needs here in our state. Um, and I already covered this. So I'm going to skip on past that. Uh, and that's my contact information. I'm also going to throw it in, um, in this, in the chat over there. So I will, you don't have to scramble to write it down right now. And always also you all have gotten an email from me already, but anyway, so um, that is the very quick, uh, version of what SC Codes is, and now I am going to stop talking and pass it over to Caleb and Alex, who are going to tell us more about React applications specifically, and then uh, we'll dive into open Q&A. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Katie. Uh, and I've got a couple sh slides to share here as well. Let's see if we can make that happen. No, my slides are not anywhere near as nice looking as Katie's, but if you'll bear with me, that's why I'm the developer and she's the program lead, right? <laughs> um, so I do want to, I want to build on one thing Katie said before we jump into kind of talking about React and what's exciting about this. Our program is here for you. We're going to talk a lot about JavaScript tonight. We're going to talk a lot about kind of the pathways we're building for you to learn. But if you have a need or if your job has a need that's technical, we want to be the one-stop shop for you there as well. So if there are languages that aren't on our platform that you'd like us to, to start building curriculum for, or you'd just like to kind of consult with us and ask some questions, we're here for that. Our Slack is open for that. Our mentors come from a hugely broad range. And so please don't feel like we're pigeonholing you into one language or one type of technology. We really want to help you take that next step, whatever that looks like. And so while we are going to talk specifically about a language called JavaScript tonight, um, Certainly that doesn't, that's not the only thing we teach, nor is that the only thing we want to help you with. Yeah. But to the, to the point of JavaScript, we are, we're super excited. We've had this out for about a week now. Is that right, Katie? Um, had, it, had it open for about a week, but we've been a little quieter about it. We're starting to kind of ramp up uh, a course called React Applications. And this course is, is a little bit different for SC codes. So historically, our curriculum has been aimed purely at beginners. We really want to bring people and meet you where you are and say, hey, if you've never done any programming, here's some great classes you can take. The applications course is a little different. This is more of an intermediate level course. So we expect you to have a little bit of JavaScript experience, which you can get with some of our other courses. We expect you to maybe have a little experience working on your own computer, because this won't all be in the browser like some of our other classes. But this course will take you through building real world applications. You're going to be building them from scratch. You're going to be starting in an empty directory and from nothing with just you and your keyboard. You're going to build real apps. And not only is that cool for you because it's experience and it's something you get to practice with, it's also really cool for a portfolio, really cool for a future employer. It's cool for you to start exploring what employment looks like with these tools and what really building things looks like, as opposed to it being more of an augment or a tech skill that you're just kind of practicing with. So this is what we would consider to be, like I said, an intermediate or kind of a later stage program. Uh, the good news is, because it's intermediate, it's a much bigger class. Uh, this is a class that, whereas our other courses may be over the weekend or over a few weeks, this could be months of work. If you're taking your time, you're working out in the evenings, and you're asking lots of questions. And so that's, a, that's an exciting thing, because what we don't want to do is have you come onto our platform, take a few short classes, and then kind of hustle off somewhere else. We want to be able to support you through that whole journey. And that's what React Applications is going to do, is it's going to give you what you need to go from, hey, I know some JavaScript, to I can build apps. I can take this out and show an employer what I've done. I can customize my code for that employer or for a freelance project. And that's, that's super, super exciting for us. So we're really glad that you're, you're here and interested in that. Does anybody have any questions right away about kind of JavaScript or React? I don't want to jump in too intermediate, 
Um, but since this is going to be an intermediate class we're offering, I do want to make sure we talk a little bit about what's in it. I don't see any hands up right away, so I'll keep jamming here. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about what React is, because you've probably heard this word. If you've done any sort of searching about programming, you've heard somebody say, oh, you got to learn React. React is cool. React is what's called a JavaScript framework. What that means is it's going to give you the tools you need to build an application. Now, you can build an application just with JavaScript. You don't need a framework. You don't even technically need JavaScript. But doing that requires you to follow certain patterns. And you're going to find over time that you're repeating yourself in those patterns. And so what frameworks are, frameworks are kind of groups of patterns that other developers have noticed and said, hey, I have an opinion about this. Let's do things in a particular way. So you'll sometimes hear React referred to as an opinionated framework. And what that means is that developers had opinions and there's going to be kind of a guide to help you build the application. You're not just going from scratch and just pasting code in and hoping for the best. There are some best practices that are built into React. They're going to help you build your application out and help you think about how an application works together. The thing React really focuses on, you can see here on the, the left of your screen, is components. And again, when you hear the word React, you're going to hear the word components a lot. Just like when you hear JavaScript now, you're going to hear a lot about React. Components just means that you're breaking your page up into smaller elements. And those elements are responsible for themselves. So whereas historically on a page where maybe you have a login form and uh, maybe another form that you could put your email into or that you could put some information into, maybe have some extra buttons on the page, all of those are kind of mangled together, right? You're trying to figure out where does this form go? Where does that button go? In React, that little login form is going to be its own component. It's going to maintain its own state. It's going to maintain its own kind of context and know what it needs to know about itself. It's not going to interrupt the flow of the rest of your application. So you can think about things in terms of how this little piece works, which is a lot easier when you're building an app out than trying to make the whole page work together all the time. That's not to say that React is easy. Programming is, is an inherently kind of fun, quizzical problem to solve. But React does make it a lot easier to build those patterns. That does make it a lot easier for you to kind of understand and see where, where your application is going and where you need to start. And at what point you can say, hey, this is working and it's done enough for me to start sharing it with others. And so that's an exciting thing too. Caleb, I know you've been working with React for a little while. Do you have anything to add there? Um, not really. I, I think you, uh, you covered it well. Um, one thing I will say about this course is uh, I went through it um, a couple times, just reviewing it and adding and subtracting things. And um, when I was learning the code, uh, I often got stuck in kind of, uh, some people call it tutorial purgatory or something like that, um, where you're just constantly taking tutorial after tutorial and you might be learning things, but you're learning the same things over and over again. And you're just doing exercises that don't really add up to anything tangible. Um, and I can say with great pleasure that this course is not that. Um, if you take this course, you will have experience of doing things from scratch and you won't be thrown into the deep end necessarily, but um, by the end of the course, you will have the skills to be able to go to an employer and say, hey, I can build things on my own. Um, and here, look at my, uh, Look at my portfolio of things I've built. Yeah, and that's a, that's a really great point Caleb makes about the types of projects we're working with. Um, the canonical example you'll see online is the to-do list. A lot of times if you search for a JavaScript project, you're going to find a tutorial that says, here's how to make a to-do list. And that's okay. That's a great project. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you keep making the same to-do list over and over, it can kind of sap your motivation. And so our goal with this course to give you lots of different projects. Um, now, potentially a drawback to that is it's a little bit of a fire hose. This is a more intermediate course. So the, the, the projects that you're going to be building are pretty intense and they only get more intense as you go. Um, we can certainly dig into some of the technical things that we cover. React is kind of a broad framework and so there are parts and pieces that maybe you have questions about. We're happy to answer those. But overall, you're going to walk away with a stack of real projects. 
and the skills to customize those projects so that this doesn't, doesn't just look the same as everybody else's to-do list or everybody else's you know, pet project. And that's really where we want to help people get to is being able to build an application and be confident in it. Not just, hey, I followed a tutorial, I built the to-do list, now what? We want you to kind of know what the next steps are when you come out of this. So that brings me to, you know, we've talked a little bit about kind of pathways and guiding you forward and helping people know what next steps are. That brings me to something we're really excited about, which we, you know, naming here is a little bit sketchy still, but we're excited to kind of share this with you and, and, and help you understand what our vision is. And that is that this React Applications course completes our first front end pathway. The goal behind pathways on SC codes is to give you something that you can start anywhere in the pathway, depending on your, your level of understanding, and come out at roughly an apprentice level. We want you to have enough skills that you could go and do some freelance projects, or you could start work as a, a really entry junior developer. And that's, that's kind of our goal. We found with a lot of people who come to SC Codes, they're coming to us for some sort of career support. That doesn't mean changing jobs, but it might just mean building a technical skill set to use at your current job, to augment the work you do or to get a promotion. We want to be able to give you that full pathway and not just whet your appetite. So React Applications is the first pathway that we're going to introduce in full. You'll see some design changes around this coming in the next few months. You may see some name changes coming around this. But the goal here is that if you've never done programming, you could walk through these three courses. And it'll probably take you a little time to do it. But you've got the support of our Slack community. You've got the support of our mentors. And you've got the support on the platform to help you go from, I've never written any code. I don't know what code is, to, yeah, I can build that. I can figure that out. I know what questions to ask. And that's the most important place you can be to help you find a job or to help you really augment those technical skills. So we're really excited about this concept too because React Applications fills a gap that we have right now. Um, and this isn't the last pathway that we're working on. We do have some pathways for different languages and different technologies that we'll be filling out and coming up in the next few months and next year. And so it's really exciting to start building out this whole path so we don't have people saying, hey, what do I do next? We want these question marks in the diagram here to be exciting for you. So maybe I should have made exclamation points. Um, again, Katie is better at these slides than me. But we want this to be an exciting thing. We want to be able to, to have you go through this course and then be excited about what comes next. And we think React applications will do that. Anybody have any questions about kind of the new course or the pathways approach that we're discussing? I see some chat to catch up on here too. Yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a question from Bill who said, what's the platform we use? So our SC Codes platform is actually built by us. Um, our content is, is, comes through a, a local company called Pathright. We host on their platform, but we build all the content ourselves and all of our runnable code is hosted and maintained by us. That's all custom applications. Um, does that answer your question or did you mean something different by platform there, Bill? Oh, great, okay. And if you do feel more comfortable putting a question in the chat, please feel free. Uh, we will keep an eye and I'm always happy to read those aloud. Uh, for, if, for you know, I have, uh, I had applied for front end basics, but somehow I didn't get in because is it, it's probably because the classes are full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. They filled up really, really quickly, but we will be offering them um, again. We just don't have the date set yet for those. And, and, and to Katie's point about those live classes, so we are doing virtual cohorts. Uh, right now, React Applications is only on the platform, which means it's self-guided. You've got mentors to answer questions and help you, but we don't have a set schedule that says, hey, Monday do this, Tuesday do that. And that's really helpful for some people. Um, we will be offering React applications as a virtual cohort. Well, we don't have the dates set for that yet. We're going to keep doing front end basics and help kind of continue getting people to a place where they're ready for this applications content. Um, but I think probably later this year, early next year, you'll see us go to a live class for React applications as well. 
So if you're somebody for whom that live interactivity is helpful, keep an eye out for that. Um, those classes do fill up pretty quick. We do have a JavaScript concepts course also coming up um, next Wednesday, the 14th. That's a longer one night course. It'll be from six to nine. Let me see if we are, I don't believe we are filled up there. So, um, nope, we are not. So feel free to um, register for that as well. I'll put the link in the chat. Thanks, Katie. All right, so we need any question. Doesn't have to be about React specifically. Any questions about SC codes in general? Um, Alex, do you have any more slides or is that, the, is that the end? That is all I've got. I will kill my share here. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, so we won't bite. Uh, no question is a stupid question. Um, we would love to be able to answer any and all questions about SC codes. Well, we've got gotcha. you. So since we've got some cameras on too, I'm kind of curious, just like quick show of hands or like wiggle your eyebrows, no big deal. How many people are here for like a job change or, or job skills? Okay, few few hand wiggles, few firm hands up. That's good. Um, how many people are here for just kind of a, a hobby skill or something fun to learn? Okay, cool. So we got some hobbyists too, uh, and I got a thumbs up. Awesome, thank you. So, to the to the job side of things, 2020 has been interesting for this industry because a lot of companies have been forced to move to a remote model sometimes prematurely, sometimes they weren't expecting it and it's just kind of been dropped in their lap. Sometimes they've been on that path and this has just accelerated the path. Something we have seen as a result of that is there's been a big uptick in job availability. And so that's a really, really good thing. And this is a good time to be getting into programming, to be expanding your skill set, because there are more technical roles out there. And when we talk about technical roles, I think sometimes you know, I'm, I'm a programmer by trade. So when I think technical, I think writing code, code is great. But that's not really what a technical role is. A technical role might be IT support. You know, it might be helping people with Microsoft Office. It might be doing something like quality assurance, where you're working with somebody else's code and just reading it. It's kind of spot checking and testing an application. There's a really, really broad range of jobs available. And so our goal is to give you the technical skills and ability and know-how to know how these applications are working, but it's not to limit you to only writing code. Just like our platform isn't meant to only limit you to JavaScript or Ruby or Java or any of the languages we offer. We want to help you get that base. And so this is a really, really good time and an exciting time to be looking at some of these changes. And for the, the yeah. folks who raise their hand for this as a hobby, React in particular is kind of the flavor of the year, I think I'd call it. Um, JavaScript as a language has been around for a long time, but these frameworks tend to come and go. So the underlying principles you learn in any framework is going to transfer to another one. And if this is a, a hobby you're interested in, something kind of fun you're hacking on and playing with, React is a really good place to start because its opinions are, are strong. Now, React actually started at Facebook. When they were building the Facebook Messenger, the little chat box in the corner, they realized like, we're kind of reinventing the wheel. There's lots of chat boxes out there. Let's do it right the first time. And the process they built is what birthed React. It's what brought us that framework. So if it's good enough for Facebook, it's probably good enough for you to start with. And if those opinions are good enough to scale to the millions of users that Facebook is dealing with, it's probably a good opinions for you to at least start on. Um, so it's, a, it's not a bad thing to start with for a hobbyist either. And we have some questions in the chat. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Elena Wilson asks, where would you recommend an absolute beginner start? Is HTML always the first step or could someone start with Python or JavaScript? I can hop yeah. in on that one. Um, typically, you will find that uh, a lot of curriculum and tutorials will start you off on HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Um, and that's how I learn. That's how a lot of people learn. 
Um, and that's great. And it works well for a lot of people. That being said, um, if you just really enjoy the meat and potatoes of programming um, and you want to just like sink your teeth into, into a bunch of logic and a lot of, um, you know, potentially, um, you know, some backend stuff as well, uh, Python and JavaScript are good places to start. Um, I wouldn't start you off in something like C or, um, you know, binary code or something like that. But uh, uh, yes, I would say JavaScript and Python um, are good places to start as well if you aren't interested in going the traditional HTML and CSS route. And Python is something that I'm hearing constantly from employers too and from other folks in the community is there is a huge need for Python um, developers in that more data science side of things. Happy. So it's definitely mm -hmm. a question. Sure. Uh, Go ahead, Jonathan. Is this, I, so what are the details of this course? The React applications course. And what it can help people do. Yeah. So, so that was kind of what Alex covered a moment ago. And, but it really can, it's a, a broad range of things that you can do with that knowledge. And so um, it is, you know, a front end development language and framework. And I'll let Alex or Caleb top that answer off. Yeah. So, and I can kind of add on to some of that, the absolute beginner concept and HTML versus Python. Um, I'm going to share my screen for this just because I think it's kind of fun to show. Sorry for interrupting you, Cappy. No, it's totally fine. No worries. Um, so we have this concept in programming of high level and low level languages. And kind of the idea is you're moving further away from the computer. So really low level is something like Caleb mentioned binary, or even something like C, where you're really, you're sending instructions to the computer, you're, you're making, making things tick at a really granular level. As you move up to higher level languages, you're still making those things happen, but it's a little friendlier. The language is a little clearer, it's a little more accessible. The reason that most tutorials will start you off with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is because you can do this. Uh, I can open up the code for any web page. And not only can I open up that code, let me make sure you can still see my slide over here. I can find where the word present is right inside this code. Let's see. We do a little live coding here. What could go wrong? Uh, can you do it? Here we go. So I can take that word that says present and I can change it to make sure I get your name right here. Chat. I can change that word to, yeah, here we go. One more try. And now you are on the internet. Now, the nice thing is you're not actually on the internet. Nobody else on Google is seeing this. Like, you don't have to like freak out and, and, you know, or get an agent now that you're famous. Either way, this is just for fun. It's just on my computer. But that immediate feedback loop, that ability to look at something that's already colorful and bright and exciting and say, hey, I'm going to show you the code and you can make quick changes to it is pretty unique to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And things like Python, you, you tend to start off kind of it in seems a very complicated. Or a black and white screen where it's not as good a feedback initially, but those are great places to start. Um, I started with languages that were like that, where you were working just on a console, and that's why my design skills aren't very good. Um, but I, that works well for me. So, as an absolute beginner, that's why we tend to start you with something like HTML, because you can get immediate, quick feedback with something that's really accessible to you. That right. doesn't mean it's the only pathway. Python's yeah. a great place to start. Ruby's a great place to start. Those are really friendly languages. And you'll get a lot of feedback in the terminal. It just might not be as bright and colorful. Uh, Alex? Yeah. Alex? Sure, John. Uh, it seems very complicating because uh, I started with Front End Basics as my first course. OK. And it was kind of challenging. The challenges that they had on the screen, it seems that they keep telling that I keep missing things. And it's hard to understand. It can be really difficult to get started with. Um, and you know, programming is about learning. 
And that's something I wish I had learned a lot earlier. I've done this as a hobbyist for most of my life, but professionally full time as a software engineer, I've only been doing it for, I guess about seven years now. Um, but I was really, I kind of felt like for a long time, hey, this is too hard to work in as a job because I thought you have to have everything memorized. You have to know everything from scratch. You have to do everything just right from your, right from your head. And the reality is you have lots of resources available. There are books, there's the internet, there are, are mentors like us and, and people who maybe mentor you at your job. So part of being a developer and part of writing applications is just learning what questions to ask. And that's a hard part to work through, but the more you practice and the more you, you hit those stumbling blocks and you start kind of asking those questions, the more comfortable you get with that. So that might help as you start running into those problems is like bring them into Slack and ask and you'll get somebody who can pair with you and help you through that stuff. Yes, we are here to help when you hit that roadblock. Um, we've got so many folks who are just excited to help you through that. Um, all right, so moving on to the next question. Next question, Taj says, I'm curious to know, is SC Codes planning to, or is it partnered with any tech companies in the state in a sort of pipeline school to job style program? Um, I, um, I'll say, I'll start with this. I'll start this one and if y'all, want to pipe in please do so okay. actually um I one of also the, want to know are they partnered with any movie or video game companies or studios because oh I'm sure i can talk about that as well jonathan um and so right now so we have a lot of supporters throughout the state and we are partnered with a lot of um you know tech companies and like the next innovation center in greenville is is um where we're kind of housed and but more exciting than um, just kind of those partnerships and relationships is actually something that we are working on currently, which is an apprenticeship plan. And so this is the first of its kind in the state. And we are working on actually applying for a federal grant in order to be able to pilot this program in the state of South Carolina. And so we are um, proposing a six month apprenticeship for those non traditional students. So these are people who are either self taught have gone through a boot camp and um, or have, you know, gone through a platform like SC codes and they are they just need that real life experience and that kind of final piece to complete the loop. And so we are working very hard on piloting a program like that where you come spend six months with us, three days a week in with the employer, two days a week in a classroom. And we get you um, hands-on experience. Um, we get you job ready. So we tackle outside of technical skills, we tackle the whole person. Like we wanna make sure that you know how to communicate and we, that you know how to uh, you know work on a team. You know what Scrum is, you know, you are familiar with Slack. Um, all of these things, we are kind of trying to take a very holistic approach to make sure that you are employable when you're finished. And we already, you know, we've had many letters of support that we're attaching to our grant from tech companies throughout the state. We are very excited about it. So we have a lot of um, support for that. And so over the next six months to a year, be on the lookout for um, that apprenticeship program grant willing we will be launching that um, and it will be very exciting all right let's see um can, move, yeah question. go ahead yeah um jean asked do we have any plans for big data type curriculum including python r hadoop in our future or any linux sysadmin stuff um if you're not familiar with some of the words in that question, that's awesome, Gene. That's a really good question. I have a in, question as well. Kind of where we're going. Awesome, Jonathan. When I wrap up with Gene here, can we get you next? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so a lot of the things that Gene mentioned, there are tools that you use for like data science or data analysis. Um, Python is a little bit outside of that. Python's a programming language. We have had a lot of requests for a Python intro course. And I think that might be something in 2021 you can keep an eye out for. I think 2020, we've got a few more things to, to wrap up there. In terms of some of those larger tools like Hadoop or R, or even going into like sysadmin and database management, we haven't had as much interest in that, but we certainly have people who can help with those things. 
Um, and as we see interests change, you know, once we bring in Python and people start using that and NumPy and pandas and, and they really want to go further, we may see more interest in that sort of thing. And so, you know, we're one nice thing about this program is we're really flexible to the needs of our students and the needs of the state. And in particular, I think South Carolina, a little less so, but nearby places like North Carolina and Cary are really big and known for data science roles. Um, so there's, there's definitely opportunities there, but that's not something that's on our roadmap in, in specifically. Thanks for asking though. Does that help kind of answer for you? I guess we'll assume yes. <laughs> um, great. Um, Jonathan, next question. Go for it. I'm interested in video games, and I know that Unity, Unity is the one best one out there. And with the Unity engine, is it possible you can you can create 3D games? Care, care. I'm interested in also creating some characters that are realistic. Yeah, Jonathan. So Unity is another one of those tools that, just like you said, is used for game development. Um, you can do 3D games, you can do 2D games. I guess theoretically you could do a 1D game. I'm not is it a, challenging or that. easy? You could, it's, it can be easy, um, but it's still going to be the same kind of thing like, like we see in our courses. You're going to use similar languages. Um, in terms of us having a class on Unity, we have talked about having like a build your first game class. But I don't think we would go to Unity. I think we would start really small with something like JavaScript. Um, and then again, if we have a lot of people interested in something like Unity, that might be a class we come out with later. Awesome. Um, and we've got a few more questions in the chat. Thanks, y'all, for keep them coming. Um, Lena asks again, are there uh, mentors or counselors that can assist with mapping out a career path? Um, yes, absolutely. The mentor network that we have, um, again, the easiest way to access that is through Slack. But you can also send us an email. Um, mentors at sccodes.org is kind of the general email address. If you want, you know, if you have really specific questions or if you want to set up a time to chat with a mentor, we are always happy to do that. So um, it can be very overwhelming uh, trying to figure out what to do first. And so we are more than happy to kind of dig into what interests you and help you try to find out what most aligns with it. It's a um, channel in Slack called Ask a Mentor. And uh, Lena, you would not be the first person to ask about career pathways. Um, and you might be able to find some great answers uh, that uh, mentors have already contributed. Um, and also feel free to uh, hop in with your own question and your own uh, uh, personal experience. Awesome. I'm putting the link in again. Alex did earlier, I'm doing it again. Click it, everybody. <laughs> um, and so Jean has a, a follow-up on that. So SQL, not on the agenda either then, or even back-end stuff like Node or Ruby, thanks in advance. So who wants to talk about Ruby? Gene, we do have Ruby. Uh, we actually have, so again, here's something you're, you're getting because you're here with us tonight. We kind of low key have a full back end path right now. We talked about that front end pathway. Right now we have a Ruby concepts course for just introductory back end. We have a Ruby on Rails basics course. Doing this right with Ruby. I feel like there's a third course in there. We have a, a the kind of the capstone course, I'll have to look back at the name, um, is a full Ruby applications course. It goes through Ruby and the Rails framework. It's a lot of content. Um, it's again, just like Re React applications, it could take you a few months. It is not a named applications course yet. Uh, and one of our goals is to get that content cleaned up, update it because it's a, a few years old now. It'll still work for you, but it's not the latest and greatest. And we want to get you as close to the latest and greatest as we can. So one of our goals is to get that updated and have that as a backend pathway. So if you're just interested in doing some backend programming, we do have that there. I do want to highlight, kind of based on your questions, it won't be like system scripting with Ruby. So it's not going to be the automating your system or writing like deployment scripts. It's going to be a lot more application development and building those little tools that you can put into your portfolio. Uh, SQL is another one that we have had requests for. Uh, it's not on the roadmap right now, but I, I think there's a really good argument for it pretty soon. 
um, at least as a concepts class, just to introduce you to it. So that's a good call. Yeah, same with Node, right? It's on the, it's on our, it's on our radar. Alex, those courses are Ruby concepts as kind of your intro level, um, and then you'll have your Ruby basics, and then uh, more of the intermediate style level will be the Ruby on Rails basics. I knew those names were close. Awesome. Thank you, Kate. Yes. <laughs> and the names can be a little confusing of which comes like what the order is we are working on that but if you have questions let us know we are always happy to tell you where how to kind of progress all right any more questions we've got about 12 more minutes would love to continue engaging with you all feel free to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask or throw it in the chat hello um oh I, go ahead jonathan i started with a uh, javascript my yes. dad reckon rick my my dad recommended on JavaScript. I started yep. on front end basics. I didn't know what I was doing, but my dad asked me to recommend on JavaScript. But I realized that I chose to start with the wrong course, that I had to start in, in, in the right order. So Did you start with JavaScript concepts, or have you gone back and done that one? Because that's really the best um, starting point. I started on JavaScript concepts and I had got my certificate. Awesome. Great. That's the first step. The next one would be that front end basics, uh, which we talked about. Um, and hopefully we'll get you in one of those virtual cohorts in the, in the not so distant future. And then comes this react applications as that kind of cap. All right. Finish it up. Yeah. But I will um, oh, and then Vinky asks, which one is more in demand in South Carolina, PHP, Node, or Ruby? Any thoughts on that, Paris? So I think it probably depends on what market you're in. If I get real, real finicky. Um, I have worked as a Ruby developer for my entire full-time career, um, mostly for South Carolina companies and had no problem finding work. Um, that's in the upstate for me. So I can't speak much to Charleston. Katie or Caleb, you may have better feels down that way. Uh, one thing I will say about those three languages is PHP stands out as a language that a lot of people have written off. It's like, oh, it's an old language. You need to learn Ruby. You need to learn Python. PHP isn't as friendly to beginners, but it's a hugely in-demand language nationally, internationally. Um, some of that is you may have heard of WordPress. Um, I think it's something like 40% of the internet runs on WordPress. <laughs> WordPress is written in PHP. So if you customize WordPress or you work with WordPress, PHP is a good, a good language to have. Um, so I do just want to call that one out if you're, you're kind of on your own path and trying to decide something, PHP is going to be in demand for a long time, despite the rumors of its demise. But for, for what is the most in demand, honestly, I'd say for Greenville, Node and Ruby are probably neck and neck. Uh, Caleb, Katie, what would y'all say about Low Country there? I would say, I'd say Node for sure, and then I want to, I don't know, I would, I want, my gut says PHP, because I don't think we have a ton of Ruby um, jobs in Charleston. And I, um, oh, and then someone says, seems like the Midlands uh, .NET is hot. Yeah, .NET is, is actually pretty hot in Charleston as well. Um, a lot of the larger enterprise um, tech companies use .NET C Sharp. But really, I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of what language you choose to learn, it's gonna open up the door and make any subsequent languages that you want to learn so much easier. Um, it's this, the basics are essentially the same for most languages. And so to, wherever you start, the, once you've got one under your belt, the other ones come much, much simpler and much easier. Yeah, and Richard, I appreciate you calling out .NET there as well. Um, South Carolina has a, an interesting spread of jobs in that there are startups you know, little companies that are starting with newer languages. And then there are really big older companies. So insurance tech, uh, banks, that sort of thing. Both, you know, with, with Charlotte being kind of banking capital in our area, and then all down the, the 26 385 corridor, we've got lots of those old industries. And those older industries tend to use more established languages. On SC Codes, on our platform, we focused on languages that we think are friendly. So a language like Ruby was specifically designed to make programming fun. From its creator, the, the reason for Ruby is to increase programmer delight. Python was written with kind of, kind of some tongue-in-cheek jokes and humor, was written in a way that's easy to read. 
it reads kind of like English. You can just read through an application to understand it. So we're introducing you with these languages, but to Katie's point, once you learn a new language, the next new language you learn is a little easier and the next language is a little easier. And just like spoken languages, programming languages work that way. So you pick up some Ruby, you pick up some Python, then maybe you pick up .NET and work at one of these big companies in Colombia. Maybe you pick up Java. That's another really popular language we have a little intro to that is in demand at those larger companies. And that's something our mentors can help you with to a question earlier about like career mapping and kind of your goals. We can help point you in a direction as to, hey, I really need to pick up .NET fast because I want to work at Blue Cross, for example. Or I know I need to learn Ruby because the company that I want to work for uses a lot of Ruby. We can help you map that stuff out. Absolutely. Um, all right, we've got time for a few more. We've got, um, do we have any IT jobs in Rock Hill, Fort Mill, South Carolina area? I see y'all yes. both nodding your head, so. <laughs> I, inter sure. I interviewed at a job in Fort Mill for an engineering position uh, last year that was hiring something like 150 IT specialists. Like they just built a new building on their campus for local IT. So that area, because of the runoff from Charlotte, kind of down south there, that area is full of, of technical jobs. And there's also the Rock Hill Tech, Tech Incubator um, that is um, you know, focused on smaller companies, but hey, they need developers too. Um, all right, Pick so. Up the question from Lena. Yeah. Um, she said, uh, about how long would you say it would take to go from zero to job ready, assuming someone has 15 to 20 hours a week to study? Um, that's a good question. And frankly, if I knew uh, the formula for that answer, I would be a very rich person. Um, it really, uh, it really comes down to how quickly you pick things up. Um, how fast of a learner you are, how dedicated you are. Um, one thing that I would recommend is just a couple of principles. Um, when you are practicing, make sure that you're building as much as possible uh, with the goal of creating a portfolio, um, with the goal of gaining those actual building skills that are different from your tutorial and your learning skills. Um, and then also uh, do things before you think you're ready. So um, build your first website before you think you know what you're doing. Um, apply for your first job before you think you're ready. Um, you may not be successful your first time, but that's what programming is all about. It's about uh, figuring things out as you go and uh, kind of putting the pieces together. Um, hope that Un unfortunately, I don't have a great answer um, to your question, but hopefully that gives you some some kind of guidelines and guardrails um, to go forward with. Yeah, and Caleb really nailed it with the kind of the confidence point there. Um, I have heard, I had, I had a, a manager of mine tell me once that the only difference between a junior and a senior in, in technical roles is tolerance for chaos. How much weird stuff can you deal with? That kind of shows how far along you are. Um, for reference, I started programming when I was eight, and for the next 15 years, I thought I didn't know enough to do this as a job. It was a cool hobby. Every job I had, I used tech. I, I used the skills I had. I built little things, but I thought, oh, it's a hobby. It's cool. I don't know enough. When I finally got to the point in my late 20s that I was comfortable enough saying, hey, maybe somebody will actually pay me for this, and it won't just be an augment, I was a little late to the game. And I really jumped in and was able to start quickly because I had so much experience, but I never really had that confidence to say, hey, I can do this. And so it's really important if you're wanting to get started. And it makes it tough to answer that question about how long does it take to go from you know, zero to junior. A lot of that comes down to how comfortable are you stepping into something you're not familiar with and saying, okay, I got this. I think I can figure this out. Um, one thing I will say to that too is a big difference can be made by the company you start with and the support they give you. And so I always recommend, and this is challenging with remote jobs, but it's, it's worth looking at. Always recommend people start with an established team where there's mentorship built in. It's a good thing to ask during your interview process um, is just, hey, 
are you going to be putting me on a project and taking your hands off and saying, bring me a website in six weeks? Or am I going to be working with a senior? I'm going to be working with somebody who can help refine those rough edges. Because if you have somebody helping support you really closely, just like Katie's talked about with our apprenticeship program, you're going to be able to move in a lot quicker. And that's going to shorten that time for you if you're really going to get started with that new career. Awesome. Uh, we've got two minutes left. So if anybody has any final questions, speak now or throw them in Slack. Are you guys currently working on a video game cor beginners course? We are not. It's not on our um, radar at the moment just because in South Carolina there's not a lot of job opportunities specifically in um, game development. Um, however, if it changes in the future, we adapt to the job market. So um, yeah, so hang tight and always be following us on social media and everywhere and um, you'll, we'll be alerted of any new courses. What other opportunities? Like television? So, or, um, uh, so, so we're fo mainly focused on web development. So it's going to be building websites, to put it in very simple terms. Um, and we have a, okay, we have a few more questions. We'll hurry up and get to them in the one minute we have left here in the chat. Um, so what do developers wish designers knew? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a tough one, I would imagine. Lots so of things. <laughs> Sean, I, please I'll, hop in. Yeah, I'll go first on that because I don't have much to say. I tend to trust the designer. So I kind of wish the designer would tell me what they want to know so that I can just build the thing they want because I trust their layouts and color schemes. And I have been fortunate to work with some really great designers and have learned that if they have an opinion, it's probably the right one. <laughs> Sean, um, yeah, please feel free uh, to hop on. Sean is one of our mentors as well. He's our new, one of our newest mentors. Um, and he, this is his area of expertise. <laughs> Yeah, most of my career has been kind of, uh, I'm the person that sits between the designers and uh, the other developers and has to translate um, for that kind of thing. I spend a lot of time doing UX development. So I can't tell you what color buttons should be, but I can tell you where you should put them on the page. That's what I kind of always say. Um, when I started 10, 11 years ago, designers came from heavy print backgrounds. And I will say this, I'll give designers a ton of credit. They have since moved on from the page metaphor and they understand, particularly with uh, frameworks like React, that what we're working with is almost like virtual Lego and we're putting different pieces together. And so designers have actually gotten a lot better at thinking in terms of I'm building a piece of something. And so let me translate to the developer how this piece should work. And the tools that they use have actually gotten better. Things like Figma um, is a great prototyping tool that a lot of my designer friends have moved over to. So um, I joke and say that they should know a lot, but I, I will give them credit that they have learned a lot more of the development process insofar as understanding the kind of assets they need to give to developers so the developers can actually build the thing that they've designed and it doesn't end up looking like a car with square wheels because it looks neat. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. That's great. Um, so this is some of the expertise you can be tapping into if you get in our Slack channel. Um, so last, um, well, last two questions. Again, if you have to hop off, you know, feel free, but we will stick around and, and answer some few, a few more questions. We appreciate everybody's time. Um, and so Grace said she missed the apprenticeship program question. So I will very, very quickly um, say, hey, we are going, we're working on by summer of next year, um, working with the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness to come um, up with a pilot for a six month uh, development specific apprenticeship program. So um, I will be happy if you wanna shoot me an email, I'll, I'll fill you in even more, um, but be on the lookout for that. And then, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, Time frame for the React cohort um, slash pathway. Well, the pathway is up and running. You can do the pathway on your own um, as we speak. And, um, we have not nailed down the React cohort dates yet, but that is something that we will be working on very, very soon. Um, and last question, developers really just want to know why, how, what is the deal with CSS? Lauren, I don't think designers says, JK. have really worked that one out yet. It's just, 
somebody somebody put that spec out there and we all follow it and hope for the best. I love CSS. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows except for Sean. <laughs> I, I, I'm not making that claim at all. But you don't have to Google everything every time you start to work with it. Yeah, it's all different. Question, guys. What is CSS? For a reason. Awesome. Well, thank you all so very much. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I know a bunch of people just hopped off, so um, thank you. If you have any additional questions, please, please, please email us, hop into Slack. We are always here to answer any questions that you have. And we wanna see you succeed in your coding journey. And so let us help you. <laughs> and have Thanks. a wonderful, wonderful night. Thanks. Excuse me. Thanks, Jonathan. Kate, uh, Katie, Thank I have one last question. All very much time. Sure, Thank Jonathan, you. what's up? What is CSS? Cascading style sheets. And we can definitely continue this conversation in Slack. Or um, we can help you walk, walk you through it. Um, you know, uh, it's in our um, front end basics class. Mm -hmm. And um, however, I don't know how Alex and Caleb, we want to want to address that question. What's easiest as far as getting him that explanation? Yeah, I think the, the easiest way is to start that front end basics class, Jonathan. I know you mentioned you've worked through some of it. Um, we introduced CSS in there. It's one of three languages we cover in that course. And so that's a good way to get your feet wet and kind of understand the basics of, of what that is and how it works. Kind of got stuck on that. We can world. absolutely help you if you've got questions to bring them over to Slack. And then we can kind of set up some time and, and get you through whatever you need help with there. All right. Absolutely. Thanks. Awesome. Have a good night. Good. Yeah, you too. It was great seeing Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all. Have a good See night. Thanks for having me here, and I will be at the. I will be sure to make it to the that front end basic meeting that you get awesome. Uh, soon. Sounds good, Jonathan. We look forward to it. Sorry, I was unable to make it. That's okay. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. You bye, too. Bye, Alex. Bye, bye, Caleb. Bye, Sean. Bye.